Thank you for joining us. My name is Jim Richardson, the founder and CEO and CTO of Finchloom. I've also got on the call with me today, Carrie New, who's our Azure Senior Architect. Hi, everyone. And Wes Hader, our Microsoft 365 Senior Cloud Consultant. Hello, thanks for joining. All right, so Product 2 Deep Dive is about Copilot, and Microsoft uses the term across all of their different platforms. So first you have Microsoft 365 Copilot, and that's what we're gonna deep dive on today. But it also lives in Dynamics, Power Platform, Security, and GitHub. And that's what they're releasing first, is this slate of Copilot experiences. But what we really wanna to talk to you about today is Microsoft 365 Copilot. And this is pairing the large language model of ChatGPT with your Microsoft 365 data and giving you the ability with the Microsoft 365 apps to create content and generate things. So real quick, we're gonna go through some of the different scenarios that you can use for Microsoft 365 Copilot. As I said, these are embedded across all the different Microsoft 365 apps, including a chat bot that you can run in Teams that will have access based on your user context to your Microsoft 365 data, including your documents, your presentations, your email, your calendar, your notes, and your contacts. And you can engage with the co-pilot using natural language. So whether you type your, your prompts using your keyboard or whether you use the microphone on your computer to speak to the chat bot, it uses natural language. You don't have to know query language or specific keywords. So a couple of the different scenarios I wanted to show you real quick with Copilot. So Copilot within Outlook will work this way. So you have a catch up feature where Copilot will start catching you up on emails that are due or emails that you haven't responded to in a while or things maybe you're mentioned on and you can go through and look through that. So that's general intelligence to help you sift through and prioritize your email. Also, it'll flag important things that need your attention right away and you can use it to draft responses to each inquiry. So again, if you're not that good at typing, you can use Copilot to do some of that fast typing for you and respond to more emails in a quicker time. Our second Copilot is in Excel and Excel Copilot works alongside the data. So finally, you can ask it questions about your data, like analyze these results and predict something for me or reformat this into a chart that I can use or create uh, things that I can share with my team. And as, as I am with Excel, I'm very basic. I know how to build a table and sort it, but I don't know how to analyze data and do some of the complex things. So I'm hoping that Copilot will help me to become a better data analyst. Uh, also, we've got Copilot in uh, business chat. So this is the chat bot I was telling you about that lives within the Teams client. And basically you can ask it direct questions like you're chatting with a real human and it'll go look up things or find things for you or extract information right into your Teams window. So this is exciting to me because I live in Teams and imagine being able to not only chat with your coworkers, but to chat with uh, an assistant, an AI assistant that knows all of your data <clears throat> and can pull things back to you that you have rights to see and can use in your daily work. Uh, next is the Copilot within Word, and some of you may have seen this already, but uh, this will help you write a document. So as you see here, you can draft it based on other documents. You can have it look like other templates. And then when you hit go, Copilot just goes and creates that content for you in Word. Uh, I was just going to ask it to write a white paper for me, and I was going to give it an old white paper that I wrote before with some bullet points on what I want new but I don't have Copilot yet, so I'm, I'm waiting for that so it can help me to create. Uh, and then finally, the last is PowerPoint. So as we're doing here, I like to use PowerPoint to convey ideas or create presentations. And now you can use Copilot to help you at least start and draft a, a beginning to a presentation. And now you can go back and then fine tune and, and edit the words and the content. So it's a great promise to use 
some of these features here as we get more and more into PowerPoint. And then the last one is when you're in a Teams meeting, you can have Copilot effectively help you during the meeting. So summarize the meeting if you're late, uh, help you to create action items or contingency steps in a table, that kind of thing that they're showing you here. But it's like having an assistant with you in the meeting that's built on AI and has access to all your data. And I know sometimes I'm in a meeting and I say, quickly go look this up and refer to this. And that's where our co-pilot can come in handy and kind of give you that additional insight that you might not have at your fingertips. So Wes, uh, would you talk to us a little bit about why a company would get ready for Copilot? Yeah, well, you know, as we've, you know, as we've mentioned, everybody wants to leverage these new tools and technologies and man, how efficient could we be with these tools in Microsoft Office? Just the examples you've shown right there, I think could save us all a lot of time. But uh, one of the key points is that Copilot has access to your data. So anything within your tenant that you have access to, Copilot has access to. So it's very important for uh, for your organization to 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 know that you're following best practices, that content is not overshared, that it is you know properly permissioned, um, and that you know your employees are only seeing the content that they need. Uh, I have a story on that. So one of our customers said, uh, when we started our Office 365 tenant, we just created one team or one SharePoint document library, and everybody uses that and throws all their documents into that. So they said, is that going to be good for Copilot? And I said, no, that means everybody has access to everything. And so then will the AI, and uh, that's not good. So instead, we're helping them to break that out into different departments or different permissions of executive versus employee and so forth so that the AI can only see what you can see. All right, with a lot of organizations that have been using Microsoft for uh, for, for many years at this point, um, it's never a bad idea to go back and let's let's take a look at what data you have, where it lives and who has access to it. Right. Uh, and one of the things I really like to talk about with customers is offsetting costs. So as you're getting ready for Copilot, you're looking at Microsoft 365 as a suite and what you can put into it furthers the Copilot readiness. So sometimes you may pay for third party tools that are already included in the Microsoft 365 bundle. So we can help you identify where you might be double spending for a technology that's already included and you could save some money by eliminating some of those offsetting costs. Also, we're going to apply Finchloom and Microsoft best practices to your tenant. So things we've learned over the last 10 years, plus what Microsoft learns in dealing with thousands and thousands of customers, we can apply in a strategic way to your tenant and roll out things that will help make you more secure and productive. All right, go ahead, Wes. Tell us how Finchloom gets a customer ready for Copilot. That's right. Well, it's uh, it's really straightforward. It's two parts. Part one is an assessment, right? We want to come in and we want to make sure the organization meets the technical requirements, licensing requirements for Copilot. We want to uh, do an assessment, provide an assessment of how you are using your content today, who it's shared with, what permissions your users have. And then finally, we want to uh, leverage a new tool from Microsoft called the Semantic Index. Semantic Index is uh, going to be a map of all of the data uh, in your tenant, and it will show how all of that data uh, is linked together. So it'll be a nice tool to help assess your Copilot readiness. Uh, from that, we, we would uh, put together a solution to implement and train. Um, and part two, so uh, as we mentioned before, we really we need to get your users ready for Copilot, um, not only your tenant, but your users to train them to use uh, the new tools. And part of that starts with with leveraging uh, a feature called Bing Chat Enterprise. That's uh, intro into Copilot world. Uh, it will get your users ready to having or get used to having those conversations uh, with AI. And uh, ultimately, we want to be able to uh, prepare them for this new world. So real simple and straightforward, two parts, assess and then implement and train. Excellent. And we do that as a package deal, right, over time. So talk about That's how correct. the timeline works. That's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, it really starts with with those best practices. As Jim mentioned, we've learned a lot over the years here at Finchloom on how to properly secure and uh, your identity and access uh, for your organizations. So step one is to just make sure that we're following those best practices. 
Um, we're going to review obviously all the content locations. So where does your data live? Is it SharePoint, Teams, OneDrive? Maybe you have some content uh, and some other uh, sources that you want to kind of bring in uh, so you can take advantage of Copilot. Uh, we're going to have to go through some set of configuration and enable those features in your tenant. So that would be uh, the next step there. And then eventually we're going to jump into uh, training. We're going to start getting your users and your admins ready to interact with Bing Chat Enterprise and Copilot using that uh, large language model uh, and prompt engineering. And of course, since Copilot is not yet released, we uh, here at Finchloom will foster any uh, access to early adopter program to, to get your uh, organization up to speed quickly uh, and get it using these new tools uh, as soon as they're available. And then in the end, the ultimate goal is to implement Copilot in your organization. Great. And so our package solution that we call Copilot Readiness for Microsoft 365, we imagine that as a three or six month flight program, depending on how big your organization is, how much data you've put in, how much work needs to be done. At the end of that three or six month period, we'll consider you Copilot ready, but that's it. Uh, once you want to go with Copilot, there's a separate project to deploy Copilot separately. That's going to be its own project. So this is all about getting ready for Copilot. And then after we finish the readiness, we can easily transition you to our new managed service that's called Finchloom Plus that will keep your tenant up to date with best practices, and it'll be properly managed by our staff so that you can redirect your admins to other more important work with your users. And we're developing this as a package solution. We're going to put it in the Microsoft Marketplace real soon. So look for it there. Um, but basically everything that we show here is what you would get in our review and co-pilot readiness for you over that three or six month period. So the best thing to do right now is work with our account teams to talk about what this is. And then we'll put together the proposal for you and get started on the work with the assessing of the environment. From there, we'll know better of how much we need to do to get you ready, and then you can uh, decide whether to do three or six months at that point. So that's our Copilot readiness for Microsoft 365 package, and we're going to move on to our third package next, which is in a separate video. So use the links that you used to get here to watch part three, which will be our partnership with Microsoft for Azure OpenAI.